The RMS Titanic was the largest ship of her kind whenever she entered service. Titanic was the second of three Olympic-class ocean liners built by Harland and Wolfe in their shipyard in Belfast, Ireland, and they were operated by the White Star Line. The ship was ordered on September 17, 1908, at a cost of £1.5 million. She was launched on May 31, 1911, and completed on April 2, 1912. Titanic was 882 feet 9 inches overall, her breadth was 92 feet 6 inches, and her height was 175 feet to the top of the funnels. She had 10 decks and displaced 52,310 tons of water. Titanic had 24 double-ended and 5 single-ended boilers, feeding two reciprocating steam engines for the wing propellers and a lob pressure turbine for the center propeller. She boasted 46,000 horsepower. Her cruising speed was 21 knots, and her passenger load was 3,327, which included the 892 crew members. The top deck was the boat deck. Here is where the lifeboats were housed. The bridge and the wheelhouse were at the forward end, as were the captain and officer's quarters. The boat deck was divided into promenades for officers, first-class passengers, engineers, and then second-class passengers. Lifeboats lined the side of the deck, except in the first-class area, where they were missing so that the view would not be obstructed. The promenade deck, or A deck, extended the whole length of the ship. It was reserved for Titanic's first-class passengers and contained the first-class cabins, lounge, smoking room, reading room, and palm court. The bridge deck, or B deck, was also first-class amenities. On B deck, there were six very large staterooms that each featured their own private promenade. Also, the first-class passenger dining rooms, a la carte and Café Parisienne, could be found on this deck. The bridge deck was the top weight-bearing deck and uppermost deck of the ship's hull. The sea deck, or shelter deck, was the highest deck in which you could walk stem to stern uninterrupted. It held crew cabins and third-class public rooms. D deck, or saloon deck, housed the first-class reception rooms, first-class dining saloon, and second-class dining saloon. The F deck, or middle deck, was mainly for second- and third-class passengers and several crew departments, but it also held the saltwater swimming pool, Turkish bath, and kennels. G deck had the lowest portholes above the waterline. It also held the squash court, post office, and food storage. The bottom deck was the Orlop deck and was used for cargo space, boilers, engines, turbines, and electrical generators. Titanic had her own waterworks system and was capable of heating and pumping water to all parts of the ship with a sophisticated network of pipes and valves. The goal of the ship's creators was to emulate the highest pinnacle of luxury. Her interior was patterned after high-class hotels like the Ritz and decorated in an empire style. Titanic's novelty features available to first-class passengers included the seven-foot deep saltwater swimming pool, a gymnasium, a squash court, and a Turkish bath which was made of an electrical bath, steam room, cool room, massage room, and hot room. The Olympic class of ships were berthed by the chairman of the White Star Line, J. Bruce Ismay, and American financier, J.P. Morgan who controlled White Star Line's parent company, International Mercantile Marine Company. The naval architect in charge of the plans for Titanic was Thomas Andrews. Both Andrews and Ismay were aboard Titanic on its maiden voyage, but only Ismay would survive, for which he received severe criticism. Many of the most wealthy and famous people of the day were among Titanic's passengers on her maiden voyage. John Jacob Astor IV, who was thought to be worth $87 million at that time, $2.4 billion in today's standards, was the most wealthy passenger on Titanic. Astor was traveling with his wife, Madeline Astor, who was pregnant with John Jacob Astor VI. He would not survive the sinking. Other passengers included industrialist Benjamin Guggenheim, painter and sculptor Francis Davis Millay, Macy's department store owner Isidore Strauss and his wife Ida, cricketer and businessman John B. Thayer, Mr. Charles Hayes, Mr. Walter D. Douglas, Mr. George Wick, Mr. Henry B. Harris, Mr. Arthur Ryerson, Mr. Hudson, J.C. Allison, 
architect Edward Austin Kent, brewery heir Harry Molson, journalist and social reformer William Thomas Steed, Philadelphia and New York socialite Edith Corse Evans, author Jacques Futrelle, were all notable people who perished with the Titanic on that dark night. The exact number of those aboard Titanic is not known, as not all of those who booked tickets made it aboard, such as J.P. Morgan, who was scheduled to travel but canceled last minute. Titanic was fitted with 16 lifeboat davits, each of which was able to lower three lifeboats for a total of 48 boats. But only 20 were carried on Titanic on that maiden voyage. Those 20 lifeboats could carry 1,178 people, about half of the number of people on Titanic. It was a common practice in that day for ocean liners to carry about that same number of lifeboats, as there had been little cause to use them before this time. The ship's crew received a series of warnings from other ships about drifting ice, but Captain Edward Smith ignored them and continued at full speed, which was also standard practice of the time. At 11.40 p.m., lookout Frederick Fleet spotted an iceberg immediately ahead of Titanic and alerted the bridge. First Officer William Murdoch ordered the ship to be steered around and the engines to be reversed, but it was too late. Her starboard side struck the iceberg, creating a series of buckling seams that allowed water to rush into five of the ship's watertight compartments. The crew and passengers aboard Titanic were not prepared for such a disaster. As was common practice of the time, lifeboats were seen as merely ways to transfer passengers to another ship if needed, not to accommodate all passengers and crew. The ship's crew had not been trained to carry out an evacuation of any sort and had no clue how many passengers the lifeboats could actually handle, and subsequently launched them barely half full. Most third-class passengers never even made it to the deck to attempt to escape on a lifeboat. Only about 20% of the men aboard would survive. Those left in the water after the ship foundered found themselves in freezing water capable of causing death within minutes, either from cardiac arrest, uncontrolled breathing, or cold incapacitation. Almost all of those in the water died within 15 to 30 minutes. Only five would survive to be helped into lifeboats. In total, 706 people survived and were taken by the RMS Carpathia to New York, the sinking of the RMS Titanic remains the deadliest sinking of a superliner or cruise ship to this day. Mm -hmm.